Welcome to the first of our short video presentations about living with and managing anxiety. In this presentation, we will explore what anxiety is and what may cause it. We'll also look at the different types of anxiety disorders and some of the most common symptoms that people experience. The ability to feel anxiety is a survival instinct that has evolved to keep us safe. It makes us take fewer risks and be more safety conscious. It's a natural response to any situation that we might find difficult, challenging or threatening. Anxiety initiates the fight or flight response in our bodies and gives us the energy and alertness to meet life's challenges whether that's taking our driving test or running away from a cross dog. Under normal circumstances, when the perceived threat goes away, anxiety usually dissipates too as our bodies start the relaxation response. Prolonged anxiety and stress has a negative effect on both our psychological and physical health. So recognising when we are experiencing unhelpful anxiety is important. Unhelpful anxiety is when the feelings are very intense and they continue long after the, the original trigger or event has ended. And when the level of anxiety we feel does not match the actual or perceived situation or we feel like the anxiety is overwhelming. And also, if anxiety is stopping you from living your life as you would like. So what causes anxiety? Research shows that having a close relative with anxiety problems increases your chances of experiencing anxiety problems yourself. However, at the moment it is unclear whether this is because we share some genetic factors that make us more vulnerable to developing anxiety or because we learn from or are influenced by our parents and other family members as we grow up. Some childhood experiences and life events can be so traumatic and threatening that the, the anxiety they cause lasts long after the event has passed. Anxiety can sometimes be a side effect of taking recreational drugs or alcohol and some prescribed medication can cause it too. Living with a long-term physical health condition can also be a cause for anxiety. And having certain mental health conditions, for example depression, may make it more likely that someone will develop anxiety. Triggers will differ from one person to another, as something that we might view as a potential threat may not raise any issues at all for someone else. Our bodies don't know the difference between a real threat and a perceived threat. As soon as we have even a fleeting anxious thought or we remember a previous anxiety provoking experience, it triggers our body's natural automatic fight or flight response. Particular sights, sounds and smells that have become associated in our mind with a negative experience can cause us anxiety if we come across them again. We might possess more complex brains than other animals, but in common with them, we use all of our senses to interpret the world around us, all the time on the alert for new or familiar potential dangers. The somewhat unpredictable nature of future events, such as work meetings, healthcare appointments, or social functions where there may be crowds of people can be a source of anxiety for some people as well. If your anxiety symptoms fit into a certain set of criteria, then you might be diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. However, it is also possible for someone to experience problems with anxiety without having a specific diagnosis. There are a number of different anxiety disorders, but what they have in common 
is that they all cause an increase in feelings of fear and distress in relation to a perceived threat, whether it's our health, being around other people, places or things. Panic is when you experience unpredictable, sudden and intense attacks of anxiety and these can happen in situations where you already feel somewhat anxious. Someone with a phobia has an extreme aversion to and anxiety triggered by a particular situation or object, for example, spiders. If we have a social anxiety, it's situations where we have to talk with other people, such as at social functions or in a work setting that will cause us distress. Health anxiety is when worry and concern about your health becomes a problem. Another name for this type of anxiety is hypochondria. Obsessive compulsive disorder develops as a coping strategy and has three components. The thoughts that make you feel anxious, the anxiety you feel and the things that you do to reduce your anxiety. Post-traumatic stress disorder is something that be can be caused by seeing or being involved in a traumatic, overwhelming experience, one that we have little or no control over. Anxiety has noticeable effects on our minds and our bodies. The things we become most aware of when we feel anxious is the physical changes it brings about when our body is preparing itself to either fight or run. Our breathing gets faster, which will help to bring more oxygen in. In order to transport this extra oxygen to our muscles and our arms and legs, our hearts beat faster. Our muscles tense, which can make us tremble or feel shaky. We could experience butterflies in our tummy, feel sick, or even have an urgency to go to the toilet as our body tries to get rid itself of the excess waste so that we are able to move and react more quickly. As our bodies work to cool us down, we begin to perspire. Our thinking becomes focused on identifying and dealing with potential threats, making plans for escape, considering all possible scenarios quickly jumping from one thought to the other. Every symptom has a purpose and although they can leave us feeling uncomfortable, it's actually a sign that our bodies are doing what they need to do in order to protect us. You may like to watch our other short video in the Living With and Managing Anxiety series, The Cycle of Anxiety. And you can enrol with the Western Trust Recovery College. If this video has raised any issues for you and you require support with your mental health and already have a key worker, please do get in touch with them. Otherwise, make contact with your GP. Alternatively, you can telephone Lifeline or the Samaritans, who both offer free 24-hour, 7-day-a-week helplines.